Spoiler alert, I'm not dead. And what I'm trying to convey in that title is that the old Alex Becker, the person that I was, had to fundamentally die, not just in a like, metaphorically Tony Robbins way, it had to go. It had to stop, it had to die, it had to not exist anymore. And the reason why that had to happen is because it is literally impossible for that form of Alex Becker to reach the place that I want to be, the person I want to become, and the fulfillment and things I want to achieve. It's not possible. It's, it's literally not in the realm of reality. And the reason why I'm making this video today, and I'm using myself as the guinea pig, even though there's gonna be a lot of embarrassing things, is I want to persuade you or inspire you to kill yourself too. Because if you don't do this and you don't get used to recognizing this in your life, it is going to end up wasting years, if not decades, of your progress and where you want to actually go in life. So give me two seconds, because you need to do this or you're going to be stuck for a very long time. In order for you to understand and more importantly find yourself the self that you cannot be and kill that self and become the person that you want to become, the first thing you must understand is that you have absolutely no free will. It is completely out of your control. You're a slave to cause and effect. Now, look, I'm not going to argue in this video that from the second of your birth, everything that's ever happened is out of your control and it's all cause and effect. What I am going to show you is that the choices you make in probably the next two hours are completely out of your control, maybe even the next day. And the most important thing is that you understand this. Because this video right here, if I had seen this a couple years ago, maybe even a decade ago, I'd be in a 10 times higher position than I am right now. And like last video, it's going to take me about five minutes to actually start making the point. I have to build the foundation first, which is kind of ironic because your decision to leave here before five minutes is up has already been made. You can't, you don't even have control over it. And I'll explain why in a second. And once you get this, it allows you to actually spot what you are now and functionally kill it. So that you become what you need to become. Now, this isn't a morbid thing. This is a hopeful thing. This isn't like, oh, killing death and stuff like that. This thing has to change instantly. It can't be a gradual process. That's not how it works. And here's why. So, look, first thing you understand is this is you. And this is the decision. Every decision that you make, even a little tiny, minute decision, like picking up a pen or what you're going to eat at Arby's. I don't care. Whatever you're doing. What you are is a bundle of experiences, emotions views, judgments, motivations, everything that's ever happened to you, everything that you believe, everything that you think about, your goals, everything is already predetermined. You are, you are a ball of momentum heading towards a decision. And this decision, when you reach it, the cause and effect has already been chosen for you. You are going to react a certain way. For example, if I offered you an RB sandwich right now, your decision to decline it or accept it has already been made. Because what's going to happen is this little ball of who you are, it's going to hit this decision and it's going to decide which direction to take based on these things. These things. Once you arrive to the decision, the decision is already made because these things are already there. So let me break this down in a very simple term. Let's imagine when you were a kid, you put your hand on a hot stove and you burned your hand. So you come to a decision, put your hand on the stove or not. You're gonna choose no because of that experience. All that stuff already activated in your brain and made you go down this pathway, the no pathway. And that's a very simple decision. When it comes down to who you marry, what you eat for breakfast, how hard you work, what job you get into, it all is done for you and chosen for you by the time you hit the decision. Now this happens instantly, but let's imagine this is the decision right here. Any decision, whether it comes to picking up a pencil or whether it comes to, a, a t I don't know, think of it, what college you're going to attend, is going to go and bounce off all the things that are you. Let's imagine these walls right here, if we can simplify you down to two parts, is going to bounce off these things that are you. Your emotions, how you feel about things, what you're insecure about, what you're secure about, what you like, what you dislike, what you believe in, how you, what you hate, what you fear. And before you think this, let me just address this real quick because it is a good question. What if it's a long decision I'm thinking about? What if, let's say you're thinking about whether or not to marry a girl or guy. Let's imagine there's, just let, let's put that down. There's so many little things you bounce off and there's so many causes and effect in your head that happen right there. But let's, let's imagine there's three things. All right, let's say your belief in religion. Let's see how you feel about kids. Okay, let's see how uh, faithful you attend to be, how much you want to date other people. And then let's say um, how, how you can stand the sound of their voice. 
Uh, let's imagine those are the only four things it comes down to. Your brain is going to go through these things regardless. You're going to hit this, you're going to hit this, you're going to hit this, you're going to hit this. Because those things are already there, you're going to hit them, and you're going to feel the same exact way based on your beliefs and views and scares and all the other shit going on in your body. And it's all going to come together, and there's a million zillion variables that it bounces off of, but those million zillion trillion variables are already there. And therefore, the conclusion is already there. It's as simple as two plus two equals four. It's always going to be four. The only difference is when we're making a decision, it's not two plus two. It's like the most complicated equation you've ever seen, but that equation is still set. Whether it's two plus two or two million times five zillion divided by the square root of pi, 0.4, zero, zero, uh, relativity of time. It doesn't matter what the equation is. It could be the longest equation. It could fill up 10 books. The equation is still set and the outcome is still the same. That is what you must understand. That is why you have no free will. The outcome is always the same if the equation is set. So what you must figure out how to do is set the equation before the equation goes into action, which is the decision. And so the only way you can really achieve any level of self-control or free will is you have to adjust this thing right here. You have to adjust you before the decision happens because you're always going to let yourself down. Have you ever had trouble giving up a habit or letting go of something or letting something toxic out of your life? The reason is because this thing doesn't change and you got the decision and because this thing is exactly the same, you got the same fucking decision. That's why you are not changing. That's why you are not growing. And if you've gone the last one to two years of your life and you haven't seen rapid change in your life, it's because every decision right here it's not because you're making the wrong decisions. It's because this little fucking ball of you keeps hitting decisions and making the wrong decisions. So what do you think you should do? Do you think you should wait till the next decision comes and expect 10 years from now, five years from now, to suddenly start making different decisions? Or should you start looking at this little ball of you right now and thinking about how you can change this ball so that when you go and reach a decision, you ricochet off of it in a different way. And this is why you have to die. And I'm, I'm using this in a very, like, Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader kind of way. Who Anakin Skywalker was in Star Wars and who Darth Vader was, they are not the same person. That's why in Star Wars they used a reference that Anakin Skywalker is dead. And in order for Anakin to do the things he did, he had to become Darth Vader. He didn't, trans he didn't slowly turn into Darth Vader, he had to shift. And in order for Darth Vader to turn back into Anakin, he had to shift. Now, this is a fantasy metaphor, however it's true. This is you right now. This is you right now. And this is the person you want to be and the goals that you want to achieve. Now, you need to fucking understand this. The person that's capable of achieving this goal is this person right here. You are not that person in any shape or form. You are you. And if you think that some way along the line that you is going to achieve the goals that are easy for this person to achieve, you are fucking stupid. This person right here is capable of achieving these goals. That's why these goals and this person line up. That's why this person achieves these goals. This person is not. So trying to achieve these goals and become this person when you are this person is not even in the realm of reality. And so what's going to happen your entire life and what you must recognize and what you must change quickly, instantly, is this is your alpha goal. This is your beta goal, and this is your current life. If you remain who you are right now, these are all the decisions. And if you don't understand your motivations and your goals and the things that you have to sacrifice and the things you want to keep, and you don't have your goals set correctly, and you don't understand your motivations, you don't understand your goals, you don't understand the sacrifices you must make to reach said goal, and you don't understand your weaknesses, and you don't truly understand who you are and what you must give up and what you must view the world and the lens you must view the world through, what's going to happen is as you launch off trying to hit this goal right here, you're going to hit a decision. And the person who you want to become, this guy right here, I want you to picture that person you want to become. What does he look like? What does he wear? What type of house does he live in? How much money does he make or she make? What are his principles? What are the things he does not do? A lot of people seem to think that along the way of life, they're just going to suddenly slowly turn into this person and then it's all going to work. I'm suddenly going to give up drinking. I'm suddenly going to give up bad food. I'm, I'm going to become more di disciplined eventually. No, you're not. You're not going to do that. You're going to stay this person right here. You're going to stay exactly this person right here. And what happens when you try and get to your alpha goal, or what most people do is they set a beta goal, because an alpha goal you can only really set once you truly understand yourself. And if you have a beta goal right now, which is hitting, you know, full-time income and stuff like that, what's going to happen is you're going to set off on your little journey and you're going to hit a decision. And guess what? All the cumulative effects of the person you don't want to be right now, but it is you, 
is going to hit this decision and you're going to make the decision based on who you are now. And it's out of your control because who you are at the moment of the decision is a decision that will be made. Now you might make the right decision once or twice. You might go, oh, I'm gonna read tonight instead of watch TV. But eventually you will break down. Eventually you will not make the right decision. Eventually you will be blind because you are not the person that can reach this beta goal. And so you might make the right decision a few times. What's gonna happen over the span of a few weeks, a few months, a year, the you you are is going to keep making the decisions that lead you back to who you are. You're gonna hit this next decision right here, it's crucial, which maybe let's say this is like six weeks worth of decisions. You're gonna end up back here and you're gonna shoot off in this direction and you're gonna hit another decision. You're gonna shoot off in this direction. You're gonna hit another decision. You're gonna shoot off in this direction. And you're just gonna end up going around like this. And this has even happened to me. And you need to understand as I make this channel now, the motivation of this channel is to truly help you by the most effective thing the most effective teacher on planet Earth, failure and not hitting your goals. This isn't a channel of look at me how smart I am, it's more of a channel of look how stupid I am and don't do this and save yourself time. Because the best way you can learn is by learning from people's mistakes. People's successes don't tell you very much. And so this happened to me for a very long time. And what I was able to do is I was able to achieve my beta goal by hitting a certain part of myself and doing that, all right? And I'm gonna explain that here in a second. But what happened while I'm trying to achieve my alpha goals, or even my first alpha goals, which are really the steps to get to this big point right here, which my alpha goal is multiple billion dollar net worth and have a cybernetics company, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Because there's no way that it's, it's irrelevant to this conversation. And my first goal right here is hitting a SaaS company that's worth $500 million that allows me to do some certain things. But again, my goals aren't really relevant. The most important thing that's relevant right here is that I was not heading towards my goals. I was sitting and staying right here. Now, what most people do is they end up actually staying in their current life right here. They can't even hit this fucking thing. And if you're having trouble even getting started building a business, if you're having trouble getting any success in your life, you're stuck right here. Like, you won't even change a little bit. When I was in the Air Force, I was the, well, I'm going to say the gamma, all right? That's the loser of losers. And I was able to change just enough through self-improvement and all these sort of things. And it was able to get me into my beta goal, which I'll explain here in a second. But most people don't even get out of their gamma self. And so the second they hit like any few decisions, that's why you see people fail on top of the thing I talked about last time. They just end up right back here because they approach that decision. And guess what? All the things that are them already make the decision when they get there. And so what you need to do is you need to first off, you must identify who you are to kill who you are. Because the reason why you cannot kill who you are if you don't know who you are is you don't know where to put the sniper rifle of improvement. You're shooting in the dark. This is why you see so many people get hooked on self-help and doing all this stuff, but they never fundamentally grow. It's because they never address the reasons why they're not growing. And so what happens is them stays the same and they keep hitting decisions and getting to this point right here is only capable. The only way to get to that big goal you want is to be the person that already achieved that goal. This is the only person who's capable of getting to this goal. This person is not. So if you remain this person, you will never hit this goal because you are not that person. And so you will continue to make the decisions that this person makes and then end up never, ever anywhere near this goal because this is the only person who's capable of achieving that goal. Their thoughts, their beliefs, their motivations are the only ones. And so what you need to do is you need to go and dig down. And I want to explain how I spotted myself and the things that I had to change and then the things I had to replace them with. And what you're going to see, where I'm going to talk about right here, is more of like a lower level entrepreneur. If you see any entrepreneurs making anywhere from 100,000, let's say 50,000 to 3 million a year, even upwards of like 10 million a year, but not heading in the right direction, you're going to see these motivations are the same. One thing I want to add real quick, the amount of money you make doesn't represent anything. Money has nothing to do with you. It's not you. Rich you, poor you, still the same thing, still the same you. The issue is here that we're about hitting goals and you cannot move to your goals. You not move towards the fulfillment you want until you become the person that's able to achieve those goals. And a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck because they have big financial goals, but they're for the wrong reasons. And it's because they cannot head to these goals. They're not the person that's capable of achieving them. So it's not all about money. It's not about financials. However, if your goals are financial, you can't move towards them until you become the person that's capable of hitting those financial goals. That is the point be anything a triathlon being a good dad not cheating on your wife for a week i don't know and before i get into this there's always going to be a person in the comment section 
that pulls up some entrepreneur or someone that's exceptional rule. For example, last video, someone said, you know, Alex, you don't have to get your gut or distraction or the thing. Elon Musk is terribly distracted, sleeps terribly, and eats McDonald's every day. I think the person who said this, his name was like Ryan or something. Let's say Ryan. That's fucking great, Ryan. But my counter response to this is in Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfair got shit faced and did hard drugs, cocaine, quaaludes, and he reached a hundred million dollar net worth. If we want to become great or we want to achieve something in our life, do you think the best way to get there is by trying to be the massive exception to the rule or by stacking the deck in our favor? By all means, dipshits, if you want to say so and so did this, it's completely untrue because one in 99 people did it this way. Congratulations. Go and try to do things like the one out of 99, Ryan or whoever your fucking name is. Because the point you're only proving right now is that you're proving that you can try and become a person that's worth a substantial amount while being shit-faced. And that's not a good point to prove. That's not something that you should set out to do. You shouldn't set out to be like, hey, I'm going to be unhealthy and eat McDonald's and do hard drugs and then still be successful. If you can pull that shit off, imagine how much easier it'd be if you rigged the deck in your favor and didn't do that shit. So don't be like, well, someone did stupid shit, so I'm going to do stupid shit. It's a lot easier if you just don't do stupid shit. So what you need to do is you, know, you need to outline four things. These are really the four things that are going to get in your way the most. And there's all sorts of other things you can look at, like being positive and how you view the world and how you view certain things. And I think these things are the most impactful, so I'm going to share these with you. The first thing you must recognize about yourself, and you have to dig deep into the ugly parts here. A lot of people don't dig deep, especially gamma people. What you need to understand before I dig into this is that everyone has a surface layer of bullshit. And these are lies and crap you tell yourself to make yourself feel like you're okay. To feel like you're doing okay. And the depths of these lies are... Insurmountable. And insurmountable is too little of a word. All you have to do is take two seconds to scroll through Facebook or Twitter to see the levels that people are willing to hypnotize them to, to their own bullshit. The lies people are willing to tell themselves to make up for their insecurities and why their life isn't really working out. Millions and millions of gammas who instead of looking at the mirror, instead of taking one ounce of self-awareness and looking at why their life is that way it is, they have convinced themselves, they have hypnotized themselves so deeply to their own bullshit that it's much more logical to them that some motherfucker they've never met in their entire lives has determined the entire outcome of their life and is responsible for a lot of their problems. And so they take out all their energy on some imaginary fucking level of shit that they made up in their own head to convince themselves that everything is okay with them. Now you might giggle and smirk because these people are fucking pathetic. However, we are just the same way. We're the same exact way, except our levels of bullshit are a little bit less obvious. We've held ourselves to a slightly higher standard of bullshit, but bullshit is bullshit if it's bullshit. They're insane. And the worst part about these lies is they are so convincing. Everything you tell yourself about why you're not where you're at is a lie conceived to make yourself feel good because the truth is disgusting. It's horrible. If you cannot sit down with a lot of your friends, Gary Vee talks about this a lot. If you can't sit down with your friends and have them tell you the truth about you, and you can't even fathom that, there's probably something nasty down there. If there's stuff about you, and you're not gonna move forward until you face it. And until you can really sit down and admit all the really ugly things about you, and I don't know what they are, and a little insecurities and hurts and the reason why you do things, you're going to stay the same ball. You're going to stay the same ball and you're going to keep making the same stupid decision because you're not addressing it. Therefore, these things hang out in the ball of you. And then when you approach the decision, you ping pong off it in the way that is not the way that you want to go. So, most impactful thing you can look at first off is what is your motivation? And I'm going to be transparent with you. Old Alex Becker's motivation, if you look at a lot of lower level entrepreneurs, it's almost purely based in ego. Your, your why is usually to cover up some insecurity. What most people is. The reason why most people want to be rich, why do you want to be rich? What is going to be different from this moment when you're rich? Are people going to love you more? Are you going, is the, is, if you're on a giant thousand foot yacht or in your basement, is the moment going to be that much different? Is the moment going to be that much different? What are you chasing? What are you chasing? And what most people are chasing is the ability to feel good about themselves. To feel like they're worthy of love. That's why a lot of people become rich. That's why a lot of people have massive egos. Because they're constantly trying to cover up this pit. And this leads to a lot of bad decisions. 
a lot of bad decisions because what's going to happen when you don't recognize this motivation is you're going to have goals. You're going to set goals, but your real goal is filling this void. You might set a goal that you want to have a $10 million, $100 million net worth, but your real goal is filling this void. And so you're not going to move towards this goal. You're constantly going to be trying to fill this void. And you're not going to be happy because really studies show money doesn't make you happy. And if you don't feel like you're worthy of love or you're worthy of being a, if you're cool with yourself, just imagine like, why would you need to be super rich if you're just fucking cool with yourself? Seriously, think about it. If you didn't need money other than to pay your rent and stuff like that, what's stopping you from just sitting in your house and being cool with yourself? What is going to be different when you're worth a billion dollars? There's only one thing really once you get your head on straight, the fulfillment of achieving your goals, the fulfillment of moving towards something. That's what brings happiness. In studies of human happiness, people are not happy when they have a billion dollars. They're not happy when they have zero dollars. They're happy when they're moving towards a goal. And people statistically are shown to die sooner as soon as they're not moving towards something. So you must realize first off that your motivation must be about moving towards something and achieving goals and fulfilling things because fulfilling things in themselves can be satisfying. But what most people are trying to do right here is they're not cool with themselves. And so therefore, they're never going to hit this goal of, that they've set for themselves because what they're really trying to do is finally make themselves feel cool and good about themselves. Go to a bar, any bar. What do you see people there? People who are trying to find themselves based on what they think other people think about them. Seriously, go look at anyone there in their cool clothes, spending money they don't have on bottle service, hanging out with people they don't like, trying to date girls or guys that they don't like, surrounding themselves with people they don't like. Why are they doing all these things that they don't like? It is simply because they are trying to feel good about themselves because they think, if other, think, other people think that they are cool, then they are cool and that they are worthy of love. And what happens when you try to find yourself, when you try to find who you are through what you think other people think you are, you end up creating this fucking thing, this fucking zombie creature that has nothing at all to do with you. Its desires, the things it wants to get, the things it wants to buy, the reason why it's, it's motivations for doing anything has nothing to do with you. Because you right here, you're fucking cool. That's just you, you're cool, you don't need any of this shit. You can go sit in a fucking cave. The moment's going to be exactly the same. You are you. And if you have a billion dollars, you are you. If you have $50, you are you. It doesn't matter what clothes you put on, what car you drive, you are you. But because you are trying to define you by what you think other people think, what, what they think about you, what you think they think, it's not even what they think, because most people don't think about you that fuck much, but you think about what they think, and all sorts of weird shit happens. For example, my motivation with my business was, oh, we gotta make a fuck ton of money. Don't get, a, get me wrong, I save most of my money. But there's been points where I say, you know what? Maybe I want to move into a one bedroom apartment. Maybe, maybe I just don't wanna spend money on anything. I just wanna wear sweatpants all the time. Because that allows me to just focus on my business. And maybe I just don't wanna like go out or talk to people or like waste time traveling on private jets because like that has nothing to do with my goals. It's like, that's kind of a distraction. Like my car is a big distraction. I love that thing, but for different reasons now. But I think to myself then, well, shit, no, you can't do those things because then people are gonna think that you aren't doing well in business and you aren't killing it. And then because they think that, that means that you're not good. You're not cool. You're not awesome. And so what then happens is you start pursuing all this shit. You start going out, you start going and buying bottles, you start buying shit to influence what people think of you because you want to think that other people think that you are fucking awesome. And if other people think you are fucking awesome, therefore you awesome. When the truth is, you are just you. And so you need to recognize that motivation in yourself first and identify that. Because if you have this nasty little thing fucking sitting around in you, everything's gonna go haywire 24-7. You're gonna make so many decisions that have nothing to do with this goal. Nothing to do with this goal. And so when you approach these little points, these little check marks, you're going to hit that. You're going to say, let's say we're trying to get to our beta goal right here, which is just to become successful. And what's going to happen, or let's say we even achieve our beta goal. What's going to happen is you're just going to keep making those wrong decisions when it comes to going and traveling or when it goes to like, why, what are you trying to achieve in your business this month? Profit so you can appear successful so that other people think you're successful that you, so that you think you're successful or are you trying to achieve the best product possible and make an amazing product that 
delights your customers. They're, they're completely two unrelated things, and until you choose that thing, until you understand that little nasty creature sitting around inside of you, you're gonna keep avoiding. You're gonna keep avoiding the things that take you to your goal. Do you see how that works? Now, the next thing is you must actually set good goals. <clears throat> and it's very easy when you don't kill this little creature. And so the first thing what you must do is you must seek fulfillment. You must seek a cause as your motivation. You cannot seek money. You cannot seek to f make yourself feel good because you are you and it's never fucking changing. That's it. It's not the, the little thing that is you. It's, it's, it's fine. It's cool. Like just, it's, it's all right. You don't need any, you, don't, you can't add anything to it. You can't take away anything through it. It's just you. So just chill. And what you must understand then is the thing that's going to make you happy is fulfillment. Fulfillment has everything to do with you. You fulfilling your goal has everything to do with you. The things that you love, you're going to start obtaining things that you love. Not things that you think other people think make you successful. Not things that make you feel good about what you think other people think that you are. And so you're going to start obtaining things that just you truly love. That has everything to do with your fulfillment. And your goals, whether it be a hundred million, a billion dollars, are going to suddenly realign. There was a point when I realized this, that I go, do I even want to be super successful? I mean, why am I doing this? And once you do that, it has everything to do with you. And so that allows you then to set proper goals. And so you must recognize that and you must kill it. You must say, why am I such a little bitch? Why do I give a shit what other people think? Because what they think has nothing to do with me. The only thing that has to do with me is what I think. And then once you're able to kill that little fucker inside of you and shit it out like a parasite, what you can then do is you can start choosing to chase fulfillment and then your goals suddenly change because if you're choosing to feel good about yourself which is why 99 percent of people get rich they feel like they must be worthy they don't most people most beginner entrepreneurs don't chase goals or fulfillment or causes and that's why they don't really build anything great because they're always trying to fill this void instead of build something great that's just the truth and so before this thing is killed my goal to feel what's the word for it Imported to other people, that's people's most goal, gets completely warped. Oh, God, I gotta have a lot of followers on YouTube. That has a lot to fucking do with, with creating grudge stuff and a cause. You gotta have a lot of followers on Instagram. I gotta make a book. I gotta have three different businesses just to say fuck you to everybody that said I can't have a business. This is probably has a lot to do with you. And the reason why I'm being so straightforward here is because this is what 99% of people are dealing with. Most people never get out of this phase. That's why we see everyone at fucking bars and obsessed with the Kardashians and appearance and what they think, like the Kardashians are the pinnacle of judging thyself by what you think other people think of thyself. It's bad shit crazy and it only leads to creating this false thing that has nothing to do with you and everyone's locked in it. And so you can't set proper goals because all your goals are being set by this little nasty creature inside of you. But when you say chase fulfillment, my goal is not a billion dollars. My goal is not ten billion dollars. It's to build really cool shit, and I have like a vision board of stuff that I want to achieve, and I want to I want to create the greatest data analytics system ever, and I want to build a super happy team that makes super cool shit that delights my customers. That's my cause, and to build the company and get the company to five hundred million dollars, because why not? That's fulfilling to me. That's what I want to do in my free time. You see how that's totally different? And so now I'm not making decisions based on what's going to make what I think is going to make me seem important or making decisions based on what I want people to think that I am, what I think that other people think about me. I'm making decisions based on what I think is fucking cool. And then when you do that, you're so free from other shit because you're suddenly able to make the right decisions. You're able to make those good decisions that when you reach this ping pong, oh wait, do I just lose $100,000 this month and not sweat it? Or do I try and sell, sell, sell something? Do I... Uh, give my team the breathing room to do this thing or do I push harder right here? Do I invest time in Instagram or I invest time just in my ads that aren't very sexy but get us a shit ton of customers? All these decisions, you hit, you hit the decision point and because you've identified your motivation and then you've set a proper goal, you start thinking very differently. But then you also set other goals that are absolutely crazy because once you get above them, once you set fulfillment, you're kind of getting to the point where you're like, fuck it, let's see what happens. You can actually set incredible goals that have everything to do with you. So you're gonna go fucking haywire if you don't understand how to set goals the right way. And you must kill the person that's setting those goals before. So look, my goal when I got started was to have a lot of money 
and to live in the house I have now and to have an Aventador. I achieved the, I achieved the net worth to hit all these goals very quickly, about almost two years into my career. Within two years, I was making 1.5 million a year. And then what happened is I got very stuck. This is the next part of the puzzle. Because what's going to happen is you might, you might figure out these little fuckers right here. But what happens is as soon as you get these little fuckers figured out, or I didn't even figure out these fuckers, but I was able to improve myself enough to get to my beta goal, is if you don't set your next goals, what's going to happen is these fuckers aren't going to align. They're not going to line up correctly. Your motivation will only be as good as your goal. That makes sense. And so I had to think to myself, what happened as soon as I set these goals? I hit them really quickly. I could have bought this house like two years in my career. I waited. I was a little bit patient. But because my goal was to make money, get a cool house, and get a cool car, my actions, and I, I grew only enough to make a lot of money, get a cool house, and get a cool car. You see how that sets it up right there? And because of that, once I hit these goals, unhappiness, spinning, if you're going and going all over the place right now and you're not making progress, it's not because you're fucking up. It's because your goals aren't set. And so you're not thinking big enough to head towards those goals. Because what then happened when I got the cool car, I'm, like literally, like a few years ago, I'm like, well, fuck, I'm flying on private jets. I got a cool car, got my dream house, got fuck tons of money. I guess just sit around and make fuck tons more of money while until I'm 60, 70. Because of that, I wasn't making like super fuck tons of money. I'm like, all right, cool. No, so now that I've done this, I want to get to a net worth of five million. But I didn't change my ideas or anything. I didn't change anything about myself. So guess what? Myself stayed in this income bubble of like, you know, two to 10 million a year revenue. I'm not making 10 million a year profit. And when that happens, when your goals aren't set, you just bop into this bubble because guess what? The you that is you is going to make those same decisions. And so uh, two to $10 million a year, Alex kept making the same decisions, not knowing why, not knowing the why. And then you didn't, I had to think to myself, why do I keep going in circles? It's because this thing isn't changing here and you don't have free will. Once, the, once you hit the point of the decision, the decision is made. And so what I had to do is I had to go back and go, what, what the fuck is my goal? I need to redefine my goals. And now I have some crazy goals, you know, and I have to, and I had to think about, all right, cool. So if you want a nanotech cyber data company, how are you going to achieve there? Who is the person that's going to be there? And so then what you must do is you start, you must start designing the person that you must become because the you that is you will never become the you that you want to become. Does that make sense? The you that is you is not the you that you want to become. You must become that person and then you will hit the goals that you want to hit. You will start making massive progress because you're suddenly the person that's capable of doing those things. And this is this is true when you're going from gamma to beta, from beta to alpha. By the way, I'm not worth a billion bucks or five million dollars right right now. So you still there's still always something to be done. Right, a lot of you guys think like once you get to a million bucks, you're gonna be satisfied. Like, look, look at I, I got all the cool shit. But instead of trying to satisfy the beta thing, I'm deeply more satisfied because I'm chasing the actual fulfillment that has everything to do with me. So it's a literally that little nasty thing. But then you must understand who you must become. Because Alex Becker passed, want to have everything. I want to be able to get drunk with my friends. I want to be able to go out. I want to be able to, uh, you know, go take vacations. I want to be able to have a super cool YouTube channel. I want to have a crazy Instagram. Uh, I want to be social. I want to learn how to... I want to play video games. I want to have it all. I want to have it all. I want to eat bad. I want to eat all the food I want to eat. I want to have it all. If a person doesn't outline their sacrifices and they try to have it all, they will have nothing. And so the person that I was want to have it all. And what happened as, as the years progressed and I was still in the same place, going up gradually, but not rocketing up. And if you're not rocketing up, this is what's happening to you. It's because I kept thinking, why am I not why am I not getting to these giant points that I want to get to? Why am I not reaching my goals? And so how I started trying to counter this was by working 10 times harder. Fuck eight hour days. The solution must be 12 and 14 hour days while still trying to have it all. So I'm trying to play video games. I'm trying to enjoy uh, food that gives me brain fog. 
I'm trying to hang out with people that bring me down. I'm trying to spend too much time with certain type, certain people, family members and stuff like that. I'm trying to still enjoy alcohol. I'm trying to still enjoy eating crazy food. I'm trying to still enjoy not having an optimized gut, stomach, brain. I'll, I'll talk about that later on. I'm still trying to enjoy not reading a book every single day. I'm still trying to enjoy television. All these things right here. I'm still trying to enjoy going to bed with sleep aids. Still trying to enjoy excessive amounts of caffeine to get up. All these things, all these wants, nothing is being sacrificed. And when you don't go and sacrifice all these things that are complete confliction with your goal, guess what? When you just sacrifice nothing and outline those sacrifices, that's the decision, guess what? You're gonna make the wrong decision. You're not gonna end up towards your goal. And so what you did must do is you have to really look in the mirror and say, what is my life going to be about? Do I want to make 10 million a year and stop there? Do I wanna be a billionaire? If you wanna be a billionaire, you're gonna have to sacrifice a whole lot. If you want to be a millionaire, you're going to have to sacrifice not a lot. You can still be a drunk fucking loser and to be a millionaire. I know plenty of them. But you're going to have to sacrifice a lot. You're going to have to sacrifice those fears. You're going to sacrifice the not learning. You're going to have to sacrifice the poor work ethic if you're gamma right now. If you're in your beta phase right now, you're going to have to sacrifice the drinking. You're going to have to sacrifice the bullshit. You have to sacrifice watching TV at night instead of listening to an audiobook. Every single day, I listen to one audiobook. I'm not going fucking Ty Lopez. I don't even talk about skimming through it. I listen to a full audiobook every single day, or try to, about five audiobooks a week. That's something I really didn't want to do. I like watching TV and playing video games. I like drinking. I like going in and eating really awesome, huge, fancy dinners. I love that. I love getting blueberry smoothies and these little peanut butter smoothies and watching Family Guy. I absolutely love that. I love going out with my friends. It's the best thing ever. I love going and renting a private jet and getting fucking wasted on the jet and landing in Vegas and going and getting fucking wasted for an entire weekend. I love it. It's awesome. But I can't do that because I have to sacrifice that if I want to do my things. And you must really value what you value, what you want your life to be about. Because you can't have it all. You can't go and spend money. You can't go and do all those things. So I had to think, do I value how I look? Do I value my YouTube channel that much? And I, only, I do a video once a week because it's fun for me. I enjoy it. Do I value Instagram? Do I value people knowing who I am? Do I value drinking more than these things? What is the goal that I want? So then I had to go and go, oh shit. Well, this is why I'm not being successful. Because me, that is me, will not sacrifice these things. So drinking, nope, gone. Bad food, gone. Um, not focusing on health first, gone. Watching TV or any form of that stuff, gone. Not having a well-focused, not having focus when you're working, forcing yourself to adapt, sacrificing a little fun time you have, gone. And this isn't stuff that makes me depressed, it makes me much happier. You have to understand that this is all about being happy. And then once you start sacrificing all those things, and you start optimizing yourself towards one goal, Sam Ovens talks about this a whole lot, it's like you have all this shit, and then you have the fire that is you. You must take all the shit and throw it in the fire. And so you must outline the things that, it, look, if you want to keep going and getting drunk with your best friends, that's great. You're not going to fucking beat me in a business battle. You're not. You're just not. You're not going to beat anyone like me. You're not going to beat anyone who operates this way. Because you're going to have, you're going to be operating at 75%. Then the other person is just going to fuck you up. Now, look, there are some geniuses out there who can compensate for this. Most of the time, that genius is going to have a much harder time and hamper this stuff. And look, we can talk about the exceptions to the rule all days long. But if you're watching this video right now and you're not where you want to be, you're probably not the exception to the rule. So maybe you should stop looking at the exceptions and start looking in the fucking mirror. So, you have to look at the things you want to sacrifice. You must. You must look at the things you have to sacrifice. And you must truly identify your weaknesses. You are not good at everything. You're in fact very stupid in a lot of things. And you need to look at all the ways you've let your company down, the ways you've let other people down. Things that you keep trying to do that you don't do. And this video is going pretty long, so I'm just gonna say you have to spot that shit. You have to sit down and say, what are my weaknesses? What are my faults? What are the things that I lie to myself and say are okay? And then once you identify all these things, then you must replace. You must replace these things with the alpha you. What is your motivation? What is your why? Fulfillment. That's the only real why it comes down to. Fulfillment. If you don't get fulfilled by making money and working on your business, go get high. Go play video games. You don't have to do this. If this isn't this, it, it, you don't have to do it. You are you. It's not, you are not going to change when you have a billion dollars. You're just not. If you have a million dollars, you're not going to change. 
If you want to work two hours a day, and then hang out with your kids, that's what gives you fulfillment, pursue that. But you have to kill this little fucker right here. The thing that makes you think that you're not worthy of something. You must. Every, every young entrepreneur I talk to, 99% of the times, their motivation. I want to get a Lamborghini so I can show those kids in high school who were mean to me. Like, literally, I've talked to so many 20 to 25 year old entrepreneurs. That's why they love the Lamborghini, because it says to every single person who, oh, who told them or didn't go on the date the prom with them that, that I'm worth something now. That's, that's the motivation. That's why so many people get into it. That's why so many people start their businesses. It's a, it's a personal fuck you to the world. That's why the angrier person is, the usually more likely they're able to get successful is because they're really angry. And then because they're angry, they're able to make enough changes to get to their beta goal. That's all. And then you need to set your goals and you need to be realistic about them. Okay, and you need to set big goals, not something you can achieve in, in two years. Set a 30 year old, 30 year goal. Set a 20 year goal, set a 10, set a five, and set a two. And you must be crystal clear with these or you're not gonna map out in your brain the person you must become to reach those goals. If I wanna have a billion dollar cybernetic company, we would actually be worth tens of billions if we pull it off. I'm not gonna get there with all this, these things. And so you must think about who, what you must sacrifice to become that person. And you must become that person now. You must become that sacrificer now. And then you must also look at the weaknesses. What are the things that I have right now and the decisions I have right now that just are not part of who that person will be? If I want to build, I'll, I'll say right here, if I want to build a giant fucking skyscraper and have my top fucking office up there and have a staff full of thousands of people doing crazy shit and we're generating billions of dollars per year, that person can, uh, cannot be the person that was. It simply cannot. In order to even start making progress to that person, you must become the person that is sitting. I want you to picture whatever your goal is. You must become the person that is sitting at the top of the tower now. Because that's the only person that's capable of getting you there. The person that you are right now is capable of getting you where you are right now. If your goal is to have a paid off $1.5 million house and spend time with your kids, you need to develop and look at what that person, who is that person? What does he look like? Why is he there? What, what are the things that he does? What will he not do? What are his principles? And you must become that person right then. Not a week from now, not a year from now. You're not, you must not gradually turn into that person. You must become that person because every second you're not that person, you're not heading towards that, that goal. Because the goal is not a goal. It's the person you are. Does that make sense? The person that you are is the person capable of achieving the goal. And so to sum it all up, if you're sitting around without identifying the person that you are, the big ugly person that you are, all the ugly things, and you're not actively killing that person, that person will continue to exist and you will not become the person that you want to become who hits the goals that you want to become. And because of that, your motivations will be poisoned. Your goals will be poisoned. Your sacrifices will not be clear to you and your weaknesses will remain. And you will set poor goals and move to those goals in poor ways. And you will set larger goals than those goals and you will not move towards those goals and it will cause you lack of fulfillment, which is truly the thing that brings you happiness. And because of that, you will build businesses you don't want to build. You will build, you will make decisions that you that don't have anything to do with you. You will develop friends. You will develop a lifestyle. You will develop all sorts of things that have nothing to do with you. And even though you set lofty goals, the person that you are is only capable of getting you to the place you are right now. So in conclusion, if you want to hit those goals that you're wanting to get to, you must become the person that is capable of getting to those goals with ease now. And only way you can become that person is you must fully dig out, like a scalpel, like a surgeon, the person that you are right now. If you don't find every little part of who you are right now, that person will remain. And then once you find that person that you are right now, it's not a sad thing. It's not a bad thing. This is, a, this is growth. This is becoming the person that brings you fulfillment and happiness. So don't look at it that way. This is a very positive thing that allows you to be a lot more happier. It allows you to finally be fulfilled and actually do things that have something to do with you. And if you want to do that, you need to take that nasty person, you need to find all those things you did, and you need to find that person you are right now. You need to take yourself out the door, you need to go down to the freeway, get on top of a little overpass, and throw that fucking version of you in front of an 18-wheeler. Because if you don't decimate that person, guess what? That person is you.